when I first started out, I was actually a physics and astronomy person. I had an undergraduate degree in physics, and I taught math and science and chemistry and that kind of stuff for, for 13, 14 years at junior high and high school. And uh, during that time, because it was a, a, a general science class, I would be going out like on spring break and coming down to like Death Valley or places like that and photograph to bring back to the classroom for geology kinds of things I would show. So I, I went back to school and got a graduate degree in photography because I decided that that's, you know, this is what I'd like to do, so I might as well just kind of push forward. I worked large format, uh, you know, eight by 10, four by fives, and uh, you know, I would mix my own chemistry a lot to, to get specific looks. To me, photography bridges everything, and that's why I tell the students I, I teach now at Napa Valley College, and I'm um, the program coordinator for, for photography, and I tell them that uh, photography is such a great medium because it covers everything, you know, psychology, physiology, chemistry, math, science. The subject matter that I like to photograph is landscapes. And the reason I, I like landscapes is because, again, going back to when I was teaching science, um, I got really interested in environmental issues, you know, especially when I was photographing and doing a lot of geology type photography, you know, it kind of got me into the landscape and then that kind of got me into thinking about how all that's connected you know, landscape, the, the ecosystems, all that kind of thing. So I got very interested in, in environmental issues. And um, photography, to me, is a, a one of the strongest mediums I can think of to convey this idea of environmentalism. It's, it has a rich history, and uh, hopefully it will continue to um, invite people in to see that landscape and then to maybe come away with a little bit different thinking about it. The uh, images that are in this particular show um, are, are the, a, new, a newer body of work for me. I've, I've kind of moved off of the film-based uh, system of photography and I've gone digital. Um, and so I use a, a Canon 5D, which is the first Canon, Mark, Mark I, 5D Mark I, now they're on Mark III. But I have an old Canon 5D that I use. And uh, these are the, the evening photographs, the nocturnes, are long exposures, you know, maybe eight, six to eight minutes, uh, like that. And then they're, um, uh, I just take it into Photoshop and use that as my, my digital darkroom now. The, um, the Rock and Water series, which is the other series in there, are, are a lot of HDR, high dynamic range. And they are multiple of five to seven exposures that have been sandwiched together and then bringing it out into Photoshop and using that as a, the darkroom. The smaller images that, that are in the show are all with an iPhone. Because I thought, OK, I, I will kind of embrace this new medium now. And I thought, OK, I'll do everything on the iPhone, because you can get all sorts of apps now. But uh, I, I'm just not young enough to look at the small screen and make all those adjustments. So I've transferred into an iPad. So I did all the adjustments in the iPad. The Nocturne series is um, a combination of uh, full moon uh, for ambient light and a light painting technique. And uh, what that entails is, is going out and you set up and you have a full moon so you can see the background really nicely and then you use, I use a, a small LED flashlight and then kind of paint, literally just paint up and down you know, where I want light to be and move through the exposure. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting because um, you know, you get really in, uh, you get really interesting looks with clouds because they're they're moving, and the one uh, image uh, at the Monteros, which is down in Andabrega State Park, I, I scoped that out in the in the day, and then I was going back at night, and I was photographing at night, and 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 now all of a sudden clouds started to to come and go, which is great because that makes a different look. But then I started saying, well, there, it's getting more and more and more, so I, I better head over to this this last spot because I really want to get this 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 photograph. So I head over there and I'm getting there and I, ha I have about one chance because by that time you know, I, I did all that and I, I you know what you do is you, you make a whole a number of images at high ISO so you can kind of uh, see what it's going to look like you know get an idea and then you drop the ISO down to do the long exposure and by that time when I went through all that, the clouds were moving in, moving in, the full moon was about ready to be obscured, all that was, the light was about ready to drop, and so I just had that one chance, and luckily I 
it worked. <laughs> so I'd, I'd like to say that I could walk out into a scene, see it exactly, make that one image, go home. Yeah, be a lot, be a lot easier that way. But a lot of times, it's it, more times than not, it's a failure. It's like you look at it and go, it's just not going to work. It doesn't. Uh, the what I thought the light was going to be like when I painted on here was going to give a certain kind of feel. Look to it, didn't do it. So it takes a, a lot of um, ex exposures to go through and and come up with the scene that you want, and also the, to get the scene that you want. Now, one thing that's, that's the same, though, people think that there's maybe a huge difference between night photography and day photography. There really isn't. You still have to think about you know, what's in the frame, what's not in the frame. The light of the moon, you have to think, it's just like, I mean, it's reflected sunlight. So it's just like having sunlight on there. So you want to you know, set your camera up and look in the, in the directions that you're going to get the shadows to fall the way you want them to fall. And also not to necessarily paint light into every area. So you do have shadows. So you do have the contrast that's in there that's going to make the image pop a little bit more. When I was uh, you know, at that process of, of doing, you know, learning more about environmental shifts and things like that, I um, became aware of this idea or this philosophy called deep ecology. And that kind of. Um, set a lot of what I was thinking about as far as what I wanted to do with these images. And the images in, in this particular show are, are really about um, wildness and about wild places. And um, that's what I'm hoping these photographs will address, that some of these, you know, these places are, they are this way, and hopefully we can keep them this way. So new topographics was really um, influential to me as well. The new topographic style was uh, saying that, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if we could have these places kind of, you know, really pristine. But you know, humans are here, and what, what are you going to do? I mean, we got to got to figure out a way to, to deal with you know humans, and also to maybe not romanticize um, the landscape as much as it was maybe in the past. Like with Ansel Adams, you had these really romanticized, dramatic uh, landscapes that had a, a very strong ethic to it but also gave the wrong notion that there was lots of places like this around. New topographic are saying, well, you know, this is not really an accurate portrayal of what, especially the West, what the American West is like. You know? So that's why um, Bob, uh, not, uh, Robert Adams would photograph a mountain range in his uh, area of Colorado and Denver. But he also showed the, all these uh, mobile homes that were in that as well. If Ansel Adams was photo photographing that very well, he would crop out the the uh, mobile homes, and you just see the mountain range. But Adam, Robert Adams said, you know, that wouldn't be, to me, that's not an, as, as an authentic view of what we, where we are today. So that was, those, those kinds of photographers would do that. And I did that for a long time. I mean, I, I really enamored this new topographic style and really thought that that was the way to go because it was a really, had a really strong environmental message. It had, you know, the idea of using photography to further specific social and environmental issues and that kind of thing.